you brought us breakfast? Absolutely not. Why not? Because it's too early to cook. <laughs> Don't be ridiculous. I mean, I just... You do a show in the morning at the weekend. Yes, I know, but the fact is that I don't want to really be cooking this time in the morning. I mean, I've just put on clothes, had a shower. I don't want to smell a bacon. Well, where did your breakfast come from? Where do you get your breakfast? My breakfast? Yeah. I'll have my breakfast after this. You'll cook it? No, I'll make a bowl of something. I'll pour it out of a packet. Well, you're very disappointing, John. You're supposed to be the expert on cuisine and you can't even be bothered to make Listen, yourself can... breakfast. Yesterday I filmed, OK, cos we're doing celebrity version at the moment, that the oh. series is done for this, this year so far that's coming out. Um, and we were doing... Yesterday, I did nine different dishes I ate <laughs> back to back. Right. So I'm, I'm sort of full. I don't yes. really need to eat much today. <laughs> When you you're, eat it, when you you're get, being fed on set. Yeah, aren't you? that's it. Just fed all the time. Yeah. But when you get when when you get one of those dishes, don't you just sort of have a nibble? Do you eat? You don't eat a whole thing. You have a couple of mouthfuls. Yeah. And I mean, if you think about nine dishes, that's quite a lot of food. Yes. And if you have three, then that's you know twenty-seven mouthfuls. You probably don't do that in the main course. Do uh, you um? Do you find that you have to regulate what you eat over the course of a series because you are eating so much on set? I try not to worry about it on, on the series. When right. I finish the series, I sort of decompress and then have to cycle a lot more and just try and drop the weight. And the fact is, you just go up. You do put on the weight. It's simple mm. as that. How much weight would you put on over a series? Prob at, pr at least half a stone, mm. I suppose, because everything you're eating... See, MasterChef's not everyday food. It's not cooking at home food. It is. But it's luxurious. It's celebration. It's very rich, isn't it? Yeah. So you, you lots know, of butter and yeah, you, cream and all. Oh, so you'd have a stuff. you know a crumble with extra butter and extra nuts, and it would have custard with it, and have mm. chantilly cream with it. You know, and you'd have every, so that means that you just. But it's fantastic. What a job. What a the job. Has telly. the standard gone up over the past sixteen years? It's completely changed, and it's completely changed because our and our world of foods changed. You look down the high street anywhere. And restaurants, you know, there'll be an Ethiopian restaurant next to an Indian, next to a Chinese, next to a French restaurant. And that's the big change, is, is the variety of food that we've seen coming. It's not just about the standard. The standard's incredible, though. Mm. I mean, this year, some of the food that we've seen from people who have never been trained is unbelievable. Do you ever get worried about eating their food? Because they haven't been trained. No, I don't, because I, I suppose I've got to trust in them. And, and I've eaten so much from so many different people over so many years. Do you have an ironclad stomach? I've got an ironclad stomach and I really watch what they do. I'd be really yeah. careful to watch what they're up to. So if they do something quite weird, say, for instance, they put a piece of chicken in the oven and they only leave it for four minutes, I know it's going to be raw. So when I cut into it, I'm not going to taste it because it's going to be raw. So you've got these things that happen. And there's, a, there's something that happens tonight with a mushroom and some cheese. And when you look at it, you think... That doesn't look very appealing, thank you very much. <laughs> so you sort of go around about it gingerly. You and uh, Greg Wallace have been working together, actually, for longer than 16 years. How did you first get together? Well, we, we knew each other. We met each other in 1992. 1992, which I think is 28 years ago. <laughs> That's it, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 28 years ago. And it was a little restaurant in um, Chelsea called Sydney Street. I wanted coriander on the route. With, uh, for making Thai curries. And this sort of guy turned up in a white escort van and said, I, mate, I want your fruit and veg order, because he was a fruit and veg man. I said, you find me right. coriander with a root. And he said, two weeks later, he came back and went, oh, is that son? Is that all right? And um, he was my veg man for about 15 years my in my restaurants. And it, it, you developed that relationship in, into broadcasting. Did you say, gosh, you've got the gift of the gab, come and join me on, on a programme? No, 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 I was cast for MasterChef and then they were doing castings and they said to me, do you know a guy called Greg Wallace? I was like, no, please, really? <laughs> really? 16 years later, we're he's still together. He's my bench man. He's, but he's just fantastic. He's got... He's such a wordsmith. He's so good at what he does. And he's Buttery a great... biscuit base. Yeah, and, and, and he's, he's a punter's point of view. He's a, you know, he's a diner's point of view. And that's what's important. So I'm sort of chef and technique stuff, and then he is more the sort of diner. Mm. And, and, but, you know, over the years, we've got such a great respect for each other. Um, and we love doing the show. We love doing what we're doing. And um, it's, it's exciting. And this year is really exciting. Sadly, from my point of view, we're on at 9 o'clock rather than 8 o'clock or 8.30. So it's 9 o'clock Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Um, but, of course, you can get on catch-up. So for me, it's sad because the kids can't watch it. Mm. You know, the kids have all gone to bed. Mm. Yeah, and yet they're inspired, aren't they? I know when my kids watch Bake Off or any of the MasterChef shows, <laughs> yeah. they, they're really inspired. They love that. You know, they want mm. to watch people cooking. I want to watch people cooking. The trouble is, John, it doesn't make me a better cook. Well, I don't... Some people, it doesn't. That's fine. But, you, but at least we don't all associate with it. 
Do you know what I mean? We all understand it. Some I people... look at the stuff these people are cooking and I think, ooh, that's a good idea, and ooh, well, I'll do that. And then I go into the kitchen and I make the same old spaghetti bolognese and lasagna as I always make. And it's probably very delicious. And do you think those people could come here and do what you do? And get up the, that early in the morning and look as good as you do? Oh, you're very kind. Oh. I just wish I could be a little bit more adventurous with my cooking. What... How can I and other mm. amateur cooks who are watching these programmes have the confidence to take those ideas into their own kitchen? OK, go out and maybe get yourself a book which is maybe of, of different styles of food. Mm. Find yourself one recipe and practise it. The same way as you do with your bolognese and lasagna. Okay. Cook it over and over and over again. Put your own personality on it and do it. And once you have ownership over it, change it any way you want. Then, then you've got another dish. Then once you've perfected that, so you've done it ten times, then go and do, do the next thing. Another one. Okay. I, think I think it's the same as playing music. If you're a pianist, then what you do is you practice that piece of music continuously, continuously, continuously. You don't go piece of music. Oh, mm. next piece of music, please. Next piece. It's got to be practiced. It's a really difficult art. Mm. People think cooking's really easy. No, they don't. It's not. <laughs> they really don't. <laughs> and the thing is, there's too many variables. You know, a piece of fish cooks differently because they're different sizes. A scallop. And one of the big things this year, we have scallops, so many scallops. Oh, I love scallops. They're great. But some are this big, like small, some are really big. I'd never have the confidence to cook them. Because they all cook differently. Mm. But everybody thinks they all cook at the same time. Mm. Um, Plant-based uh, mm. dishes you've done over the past few years, can you, and I'm speaking from self-interest here, can you really a make vegan. a plant-based vegan meal as delicious as a lovely meal with meat in it. Absolutely, completely. But what you've got to do is understand things like spicing. So, especially if you take a, a country that specialises in food which is vegetarian or plant-based, work with it. So, Indian food's fantastic. Ginger, onions, garlic, the first layer. Mm. Then all the spices come in, second layer. Then maybe jackfruit or tofu or whatever it might be, next layer. Then goes things like coconut milk. Then braise it long and slow. Of course it's going to be delicious. Because everything is sort of bland, but then you spice it and you flavour it. Mm. I, th I absolutely believe plant-based can be as delicious. Do you have an issue uh, over calling these meat alternatives meat? Because there are certain people, some of them, one of them, might work on this programme from time to time, <laughs> who thinks it is completely ridiculous that we say vegan steak, vegan sausage roll, vegan steak bake. I, I have an issue with the vegan sausage, because for me, a sausage has got pork and fat in it, and therefore you know already what a sausage has got in it. It's a thing which you say... Isn't a Glamorgan sausage not a uh, meat sausage? OK, I can give you that. That's right. fair enough, okay. Glamorgan sausage. So what you don't have a problem with a Glamorgan sausage? But it's got cheese in it, it's full of cheese and fat. It's still a fatty product. It's still something which is, is going to be... Well, I know that in the vegan sausage roll there's still plenty of fat. Uh, there you go. Uh, but everybody believes there's not. Mm. And that's one of the things that concerns me, is this, there's an issue here with... the uh, Vegan sausage roll, OK, or vegan roll, OK, I don't have an issue with it whatsoever. Yeah. But uh, uh, there is a, there is this... And I, I've got this... I'll get this in the neck from my sister-in-law very soon as well after this. But um, Why your sister-in-law? Because she's a vegan. Right. And because there is that sort of concern, vegan steak, whatever it is. It is, it is a hard terminology thing, mm. um, because what are you really eating? What is in well, a vegan steak? you're eating, steak? clearly, vegan steak. Yes, but what's in it? Well, I don't know what might be in my meat. Well, but it's still beef. You know it's a piece of beef. That's that's my issue. There it is. I know I've got a okay, beef John. steak, you a lamb know, steak. You don't know what's in a sausage. Uh, no, I don't know, oh, unless I read the pack. Mm. <laughs> no. of, all the, of all the hundreds of dishes that you must have eaten over, possibly thousands, actually. A few thousand, I think. Is there one that, you, that stands out that you remember and say, that was tip-top the best? Uh, in the whole world ever? In the sh on the show? The show, not so much, because what happens is everybody who's great is great. Yeah. For me, still one of the standout meals in my whole life was sitting on a beach in Portugal and a person brought a bucket around which had fish in it. They, the fish was then taken to a, a barbecue. I saw the lady cook it. Mm. And a chilled glass of rosé. We looked out on the beach. Because food's not just about eating. Food's about life experience. Mm. Food's about the whole package. Eating is about everything. It's about mm. romance, it's about atmosphere, it's about, you know, all those things that make everything taste so much better. How do you feel about chlorinated chicken? I yeah. think it's really bad. Is there any romance in that? <laughs> Absolutely none whatsoever. <laughs>